Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Monday, May 6th. I'm Rose Duncan, Canon for Worship, and we're so pleased you decided to join us this morning for our service of reflection and prayer. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Let us pray. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do this day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 149. Alleluia. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak, wreak vengeance on the nations and punish on the, on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is a glory for all his faithful people. Alleluia. The reading comes from the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, beginning at the 26th verse. Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is as when someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it sown, it grows upon and opens and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in the shade. Just a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated Earth Day when we took the time to consider the state of God's creation. The creation which God declared good is entrusted to the care of humankind. Yesterday was Rogation Sunday, and these three days leading up to Ascension Day are called Rogation Days. If you follow the lectionary, you probably notice the change in the Gospel reading to shine light on the days of Rogation. Rogation days are a way for the church to honor God for the gift of creation and to pray for the land, the gift of labor, and the needs of all people. The word Rogation has its roots in a Latin word which means to ask or to petition, and it comes from the ancient introit for the Sunday preceding the Ascension. In some places, the celebration of Rogation Days were quite elaborate and included processions from the church to and around fields while asking for God's blessing. Traditionally, parishioners led by the rector would beat the bounds, processing along the parish's geographic border while praying for God's blessing in the coming year. In the Anglican tradition, Rogation has become closely associated with specific prayers for a bountiful growing season. Churches that have maintained the practice of celebrating Rogation Days in our time may no longer mark these days specifically before the Ascension. Instead, Rogation Days are often celebrated at times and places that meet the local needs. 
with an increased awareness of the need for the stewardship of creation, both within the church and within contemporary culture. The themes of thanksgiving for the land and petitions for a fruitful earth may be adapted around broader cultural celebrations of Earth Day or at other times. Although irrigation days are agricultural celebrations, they are not solely for rural congregations. While rogation days are an optional observance in the Episcopal Church, these days underscore the dependence of all people, urban and rural, on the fruitness of the earth and of human labor. Almighty God, in giving us dominion over things on earth, you made us fellow workers in your creation. Give us wisdom and reverence, so to use the resources of nature that no one may suffer from the abuse of them, and that generations yet to come may continue to praise you for your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the words our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, strengthen you to walk with Christ in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>